Uh, one day's worth of work and one flat tire. The neighbors are working fast. Started today. Got the main in. Looks like he's putting in his first lateral out there already. Check this main line out. Eight inch pipe down there. Jump over. Yeah, see it's running water already. Not surprised. So yeah, we got water already. Now it's kind of kind of dirty there because it's coming out of that connection. Well, I think the pipe's slotted too. So you can see it's real clean coming out of the outlet there. So it's already draining water out of the lowest point, which is where the main will be. And then we're going to put in, oh, about two dozen laterals or so. Something like that. 20, I think, at least. We go over here. See, there's the county main. That's all going to be to the south of what we're putting in. But that is a drain that was already there. But that's draining a bunch of people. And it's very old and probably full of dirt, broken down in spots, stuff like that. You get to see your subsoils when you do this stuff. We're used to this area being, you know, good black dirt. What they tell me with this track machine over their old pull type plow behind the tractor is they can really ease into a new connection like this off of the main. They don't have to drop the clutch and get going you just got all the weight and traction you could need to do this about 1.8 mile an hour oh got freed up it goes about 1.8 mile an hour when they're not having any trouble which over the course of a day you cover quite a bit so pete's gonna Pull this four inch perforated pipe in. I'm gonna walk along and then hop up in the cab. Uh, another thing I also like is, if I can explain this right, it has two points, multiple points of adjustment to handle the grade so we can keep a good slope going because of course you want the water to be going downhill. And he's got, when he gets way off of that you'll see up in the cab up in here he's got a screen but there's also a dial gauge that's actually mounted to the cab if he gets up over a rock or something and it's, it's kind of out of whack on his screen with his pre-planned route so this this is all mapped out ahead of time so that screen is telling him what he wants the grade to be from the beginning of the run to the end of the run to keep enough you know drainage coefficient going there you can see there on the left there's a little dial that's mounted to the cab the cab actually pivots with that arm that the plow boot is on to keep his angle so that was december now here we are in the beginning of april where those tile lines have really you know settled down over the winter we've gone and picked up the rocks that got pulled up and now we're going to fix the field up now we're working down these tile lines where we had drainage installed. Out here with the vertical tool. Getting them leveled out. A little bit wet, but enough to do this job and hopefully we stay a little bit dry now that we're going into April and be planting out here before too long. couple of different conservation things going on in this field. See, I got the tractor and the disc behind me. What I'm doing in this grass, and you can kind of see the dead thatch behind me, doing mid-contract maintenance for CRP, that's Conservation Reserve Program. And we also got some cover crop out in the field behind me. So let's check these out. So here's the CRP. I've been through once. The idea is you get 50% bare dirt showing I think is what it says I've been through once some places are more tore up than others I might try it twice I think twice may be too much but what our CRP is 
is these 40 foot grass buffer strips between the field and the open drainage ditch here, the county ditch. So the mid-contract maintenance, the idea is you beat up about half the grass and you allow some broad leaves and other native stuff to kind of pop up flowers and things like that instead of just grass. Here's kind of the halfway point. Here's the untouched part. A couple pickup truck tracks out there, but you can kind of see how that works. So I don't know, I'll drag through here part of it a second time, see what it looks like. I don't want to just destroy it all. And then if we'll go out here in this cornfield, what was a cornfield last year, you can see some cover crop out here. You can see it's green enough over there. This is probably our best looking field of cereal rye at this point of the year. So that's going to keep growing. I'll bet you the roots are down pretty far already. They're usually more than you think. So this is going to grow... Oh, my plan would be... It'd be getting up a few more inches by the time we plant. And then we'd probably let it grow to the point where it starts putting a head on. Like wheat. And then kill it off then. So... We're just going to see what the weather does, how things cooperate. Sometimes we terminate it earlier than we'd like because we're afraid it's going to get too wet and get away from us, all that kind of stuff. So it gets to be kind of a day-by-day -day thing at some point. But hopefully we're coming into kind of a dry spell and things will work the way we would plan them to. Anyway, that's what we got. I got... CRP on both sides of this ditch and then across the road same thing and this is the one of these four fields that has cover crop in it and it is looking pretty nice oh another thing we let it get that tall so about my head height and you get a lot of really good weed control out of that what we found is if we can get the cereal rye big enough when it dies it lays down and makes a mat on the floor of the field and that's kind of a weed suppressant and the crop is up above that we have found the fields that we can do that with they need one herbicide pass in the summer all the other fields without the cover crop where it didn't get big enough they need two passes so we're cutting out a herbicide pass that by itself pretty much pays for the cover crop along with the other benefits better soil structure all that kind of stuff I'm on the other side of the road working the CRP. One thing that likes this is the pheasants. There's one running ahead of me in that green stretch. Now he's going over to the other side. There she goes. Yeah, I'm working this side. I'm just taking a guess about half since the disc is 29 feet wide. I'm just trying to keep my tires on the edge and hanging the wing out in the field. Behind me, it doesn't look like a lot unless you get out there and really look at it because the all that dead stuff just kind of lays flat on top but I think it'll do what the intention is so do this one one other year and we've got another one a few miles north of here and that'll be all done that's pretty good timing I'm all done here and the fertilizer retailer showed up spread fertilizer in that field where I was level on tile line so you ought to be in pretty good shape to do that about halfway down with that field already. I'm headed home. Here my dad and my oldest son had taken over the tractor and they'd gone up and worked on some field edges where we had a neighbor and his excavator uh, clear out some trees and some fence rows. So they kind of leveled that off. So we'll go back and we'll pick up roots and sticks and rocks that are left after all that but here they're doing the uh, last bit of crp on that other field i said was a couple miles away so they're doing that mid-contract maintenance right here
about one day's worth of work and one flat tire. Still on the rim though.